absolutely. Yes, we are changing the way we generate identities, we manage identities, and we uh, verify identities and we access services. So the European Commission already uh, looking forward uh, on how to change this. There are new uh, regulations uh, that are currently under discussion on how to reform the identity space, uh, especially uh, state identities, moving from a uh, centralized approach or more toward a more decentralized approach where identities can be issued by government, but also be verified uh, across different government without uh, direct interaction uh, of uh, offices, uh, adding bureaucracy, adding administration uh, uh, burden. And on top of that, collect credentials, collect attributes that allow people to show who actually they are in a trusted way, what attributes their identity brings forward to access service, to be verified uh, for age uh, restriction uh, whenever it's needed. So this can happen now in a much more decentralized way rather than centralized. So the European Commission itself is looking now to expand and uh, adapt the initial ADAS network that was a, a network between member states to create uh, and issue state identity for digital services that was still relying on centralized concept. Now is moving toward a decentralized view that they start to look into now to employ uh, ledgers, how they call them, but we know there are distributed ledger or blockchain technologies to be the underlying trust uh, rather than the member state itself that guarantee a person is who claim to be when he travels, when he moves, and when he tries to access service along uh, different states in Europe. And that's just the start. So we, we see this way of people moving and be trusted across uh, border as well, across countries, across uh, oceans. <laughs> Hopefully, if, uh, things like this are happening also uh, in other countries, in other uh, continent. Uh, and one of these reform of FIDAS will also culminate with uh, what is the introduction of actually uh, digital wallets. Uh, digital wallet that people will carry with them, will carry in their mobile phone to carry not anymore currency, not anymore credit card, uh, debit cards, uh, or token like somebody's doing uh, for payments, but carrying their identities, their identity credential that they can present, that they can access services. Imagine I go to a doctor and I want to uh, show what I'm actually uh, need assistance for. Uh, in a foreign country, there is no more need for the doctor to go and look for this in my origin country, start to make phone calls. I get this from my wallet as a credential that everybody can trust because it's been issued by a central a trusted authority in my country. It's a very good point. It's also uh, actually one of the reasons we still see a bit of uh, delay in uh, the new concept of decentralized identities uh, taking forward uh, because the idea before was uh, one uh, all or, or nothing. So one identity or the other. And that's not actually the way I see this going forward. Uh, the way it's a complementarity. Uh, of course, there will be case and scenarios where identities like this concept of self sovereign identities can be uh, self issued so an identity is uh, decentralized now self sovereign is basically an identifier that is immutable on a ledger and a uh, public key in terms of cryptography a private key is always controlled by the subject that created identity so there is no more need for a government, let's say, to create that identifier is the number of my passport, let's say. So anybody can create that and can start to collect credential, but there will be use case on which it will be enough to collect a uh, credential that states me, it's me, and have some features, uh, attributes like a living a country or another country that can come from, uh, let's say, other identities, peer identities that can other uh, summara, uh, sum up and say, I can say that Michele lives in this country or the other country because I have interaction with him. But there will be also use cases where I need some other authority that have done proper KYC of me, that have verified uh, all the aspect of my uh, identities or uh, legal or any other position like state identity that can uh, say actually Michele is who he claimed to be. Credit card issuer, uh, debit card issuer, that do KYC. So this will create uh, not 
a different identity will create a credential that sits on top of this decentralized system that add more value to my attributes because come from an established authority that they've done control, have done KYC, has a bit more value, uh, a bigger uh, value. So it's a different level of insurance when I interact with a third party. So long story short, there is no competition, in my opinion, there is uh, complementarity, there is integration of these two technology and what identity was in the past and new identity will be in the future with the central point be the person controlling it, but there will be still a role for centralized identity provider to start to issue now credential and empower citizen and people to manage them and present them. So, and there will be the need, of course, to reinvent some of the business model that exists in the, in the domain. But of course, I see this as a complementary uh, landscape that will come together for, uh, for a greater good. Absolutely. Uh, we are working on this project uh, uh, called EnsureSec. Uh, it's a European project funded uh, under the Horizon 2020 framework. It's an innovation action, so it actually try to establish new technology and test their uh, viability in the market for creating uh, innovation and creating also better process. And we are actually tackling the uh, e-commerce, let's say, infrastructure, having in mind also to uh, create a more seamless way for the digital single market that Europe uh, uh, is uh, is building up uh, in a way that uh, it's trusted across country. And one way that uh, we see uh, one of the barriers is basically uh, the difficulties for small and medium companies to uh, basically be part of a marketplace, of e-commerce marketplace, because they have either to uh, rely on, on third party and uh, they have to uh, build their customer base. And when this comes, they bring also a lot of uh, data about their customer, especially if you think about uh, small and medium enterprise selling uh, age restricted items or items that are only be sold like drugs and medicine, uh, dispatched to people that have the right uh, requirements. And all of this require this small company uh, to either be with a bigger player or be able to have an infrastructure that is secure to maintain all this personal data, all this sort of uh, information that expose also the risk of uh, cybersecurity uh, for them. So with the centralized identity, we are exploring the opportunity for them to still have the same knowledge about their customers, still able to verify age, still able to verify any other uh, feature before uh, providing uh, uh, whatever uh, the customer is aiming to, 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 to buy uh, with the centralized uh, identity and verifiable credentials. So this knowledge, this information is not anymore a burden for them to create. So they can speed up and lower the barrier, the friction to be part of uh, a digital single marketplace. So this one example, we are also testing the uh, identity, the centralized identity, not only for person, but also for company itself. So if a company have to open up an e-commerce store, again, they need to prove they have uh, uh, enough uh, cover of uh, any liability. Uh, this information also require uh, checks and what is best than uh, a bank that also have uh, knowledge of the, the, the book, login book, uh, accounting book of, of an SME issue a credential toward uh, the marketplace operator for the company to operate in a way that's seamless and prove uh, that uh, a company can receive uh, finance credit and uh, trade trade finance and so on and so forth. So uh, there are a few ways we are exploring this on how to, to use, uh, yes, the centralized identity in creating a more, let's say, dynamic, uh, frictionless uh, e-commerce infrastructure that still maintain the security that e-commerce should provide because these days, more than before with the uh, COVID experience, lockdown, we rely on e-commerce much more than before and more and more will be in the future.